Welcome to a short introduction of ISO 14001 and the new ISO 45001. The environment is the surroundings in which an organization operates, including air, water, land, natural resources, flora, fauna, and humans, and their interrelation. The environment is this context extends from within an organization's location to the global system, as the next slide will show. First you will identify how your organization impacts its own surrounding and people, then the city you are located, your country and last but not least the rest of the world. What types of pollution are there? The most common is air pollution. Water pollution. By releasing toxic substances into our water system. Ground pollution. By producing waste product and byproducts which pollute the environment where we dump the waste. By polluting or contaminating the land in and around our workplace. Wastage of natural resources. By using more raw materials than we really need. By wasting natural resources for example water. By wasting electricity. The pollution cycle of landfills. Methane gas is naturally produced during the decay of organic matter in the landfill. There are over 10 toxic gases released from landfills, of the most serious of which is methane. Groundwater pollution, from leachates, the liquid that drains from a landfill. ISO 14001, is an environmental management system that organizations implement, to improve their environmental performance. There are two key terms. Environmental aspects. Like the gases released by this power station. And the environmental impacts. The hazardous gases is a byproduct polluting our air. What aspects and impacts can you identify in your job? The cutting machine leaking oil is the aspect. The impact is the cutting oil potentially polluting the groundwater. Now we can see a good example of how the coolant polluted the grass and surroundings. How to evaluate the risk? You first calculate the likelihood the risk can occur. How often is the aspect that caused the impact in operation? What is the outcome of the event should it occur? It is irreversible or minimal. You will then multiply the likelihood by the exposure and the consequence to calculate the risk. You will then give priority to the highest risks first to implement a management program to manage the risk. A management plan shall be developed after consideration of the following principles. The elimination or containment of the risk. The use of engineering controls, example isolation, or administrative. Personal protective equipment and monitoring equipment The implementation of operational controls. Management plan shall include the means and time scales to manage the activity to ensure continual improvement in performance. The progress of management plan shall be discussed at the monthly management meeting. The management plan will include how to identify and manage hazardous waste, reduce waste, reuse waste, recycle waste. What waste does your factory produce? 1. Identify the hazardous waste. Swarf container leaking coolant. Poorly maintained bund wall to prevent the coolant from contaminating the grass and filtering to the groundwater. Now you can identify what recyclable waste you have in your organization. Like metal, paper, wood, and plastic. What are the benefits of recycling? Products are improved. General health are improved. Legal fines are reduced. Customers are happier. Landfill waste is reduced. Most of all costs are cut, and you get money back from recycling. Here we can see a typical example how the wastewater from factories that run into the river pollutes the oceans. Notice the discoloration of the rocks in the direction of the current versus the white's rocks on the left. Let's work together to implement effective environmental management plans to protect our environment, and the health and safety of our workers. 